coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, Chain Reaction. Hi, I'm Zoe Falls, and today on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, we're going to look at Chain Reaction. Chain Reaction is a website from Arizona State University, and it has a lot of different science, environmental, animal, environment sort of resources for teachers. And it includes their little magazine that they upload fairly frequently, it looks like, and on different topics as you scroll through. It's urban ecology. There's one on making tracks on Mars, um, desert, because Arizona's in a desert. And so as you go through, you can kind of see more of what they offer. And then they have a teacher's lounge that includes some lesson plans. And they have ones on, like I said, little ecosystem, how to catch a wave, tale of a city. And it's developed by faculty at the university. But they also have some little interactive games and that's what I wanted to look at first. So we have desert diets and then you can match the desert dwellers to the foods they eat. So again, if you're going through a unit and you're talking about animals and the animal kingdom and who eats what and I mean I don't live in a desert and I don't know what I could eat if I was in a desert. So maybe that's a way in to get your students thinking about it, talk about like where do you live, what do you eat where you are, you can talk about local resources that they have. I mean, this is Nebraska. We got a lot of corn, got a lot of beef. Um, you know, but if you're in Hawaii, maybe you're like, oh, we got pineapple. We got a lot of pineapple. And, you know, in the desert, maybe get them to thinking about, like, maybe what isn't as easily accessible. Talk about, like, water and how it's harder to get water when you're in the desert. But can you eat cactus? So let's go ahead and look at desert diets. We're going to start the game. And look at all the little, oh, little bunny. All right, a chuckawalla. Never heard of a chuckawalla before, so I've already learned something new. Choose the most complete, correct answer from the choices listed on the right. I'm hoping he, uh, he doesn't eat baby birds. I'm, I'm hoping. So we're going to go with fruits and leaves. <gasps> I was right. That was a total guess, mostly because I didn't want him to eat baby anything. So, we'll go to the next question. A red-tailed hawk. I'm pretty sure this guy eats rodents, rabbits, and snakes. Okay, so again, it's a fairly simple game and it's very much like look at our picture, do some multiple choice, but you can do it as a whole class activity. You could do it in smaller groups with the students and you can do some interesting sort of competition type things to get them engaged and excited about it. Let's go check out another one. Desert tracks, what animals have left their tracks in the desert? All right, so animal tracks, I'm from mountains. Well, you have to know what tracks are good and what tracks are bad if you're gonna go camping. Remember learning that as a little kid. Because if it was bad tracks, you needed to be aware and get to the car and like go back down the mountain. If they were good tracks, you kind of hid the food and like you were okay. So. This could be a really interesting thing to do with the students because the tracks you're going to find in the mountains are probably going to be different than the tracks you find in the desert. So from the choices on the left, drag the photo of the animal under the tracks belonging to that animal. All right, let's see. Oh, so this one's kind of fun. So the animation kind of moves, so it looks like it's walking a little bit and you have to choose each one. So I'm pretty sure that that's a bunny track. No, it's not, okay, not a bunny track. Road runner, what's a road runner track look like? That's not a road runner track either. Is that a bobcat track? Nope. Okay, well I'm running out of options here. It's not a bighorn track, no. Hmm. Bobcat, bighorn. Ha ha! All right, so it'll turn red if it's wrong and you can try again. 
And then you can talk about like the size and what that means, what the shape means, if it's got hooves versus if it's got toes and toenails. So we're going to continue tracking. We'll do one more of these. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so. Yay. And then, okay. Yay. All right, again, so you can go through and have your kids work on identifying the tracks. So depending on how you're building a unit, that might be a nice way to link what you do in a field trip or in an outside excursion to what they're doing in the classroom. This is also something that they can access at home. So they could do it with their parents or their siblings or their friends and, you know, keep the learning continuing. Name that file. The suffix file means liking. See if you can figure out what some of these files enjoy looking at the roots of the words. All right, we're going to see. Autofile. Autofile likes... Want to hint an audio and instrument. Let's see here. Records. Okay. So to give you a hint. And Aha. Okay. So you have to figure out what these. So again, vocabulary building more here than science, but you can talk about suffixes in words and what that means and how that can help identify other words as they build their vocabulary. So a technophile likes technology, a francophile, okay, anglophile. So here you can talk about like where the words come from, Anglo coming from England, even though they don't sound alike. But again, as you go through their website, they have a lot of resources you can go through. And there's also a part that I found where you can sign up and get their magazine and stuff sent to you as an educator. So if you're interested in some of their developing lesson plans and even joining their sort of learning community, you can do that and get more information and maybe just spark some new ideas on teaching science and engaging your students in the classroom. So I'm Zoe and this has been Chain Reaction on Mobile Learning in the Classroom. See ya.